Hey everyone, welcome to my dining room table, AKA studio. And I hope that you have all found places where you can be creative in the past couple months and this summer. Um, I know a lot of young people are missing studios at school and missing their creative communities. And so I just hope that you have a space in which to create, uh, whether you do art or dance or uh, make music. Um, it's good to have a space to do that in. I'm really excited to be here with you today because that means you are making an effort to connect with others through awakening this summer. And I think that's really beautiful because um, it's important that we stay creative. It's important that we stay in community, especially in times of crisis. So I'm excited to be here with you today. Uh, my name is Emily Christensen and I'm the director and an instructor at CultureWorks here in Holland and we provide after school and summer art programming and we want to make art and design experiences available and accessible to teens of all backgrounds. So I am excited to be partnering again with Awakening this year to provide a little um, inspiration hopefully for you guys as you engage with others and continue your journey uh, with Christ this summer. So I'm gonna introduce you to some things that I've been working on lately and to some basic tools that you can use as you journal and as you think about God's word this summer. Um, these have been practices that have been really important to me lately. I have a hard time being creative uh, in the midst of anxiety. And so um, these are, are real small, easy things um, that you can do to just stay in the word and stay creative. And um, they really help me as I focus on the word because they make me read really slowly and intentionally and keep me grounded. Um, and they help memorize um, scriptures as well. I'm a very visual person, so I need to see things um, laid out. So yeah. So it helps me to write and sketch and draw. So let's start. In this video, I'll introduce you to a couple of different styles of calligraphy that are created using a flat brush or a flat tool. And we'll use watercolors and acrylics and even look at the font used in Black Panther. So first of all, you can see that the flat brush mimics other writing tools like quills, bamboo pens, parallel pens, and square metal nibs. And you can use these techniques and calligraphy styles with a flat edge of a cardboard or the flat edge of a chalk or a chisel tipped marker as well. You can see how the angle of the brush determines the balance of thick and thin strokes. And depending on the calligraphy style you're doing, you'll hold the brush somewhere between a zero to 90 degree angle. It's important to keep the brush as upright as possible and to keep it at the same pressure on the page throughout the stroke. You'll notice that with most calligraphy styles using a flat brush, you'll create the letter in several strokes, just like these E's. This is because the brush, like the metal nibs, works best when it's pulled down and back rather than when it's being pushed. You can also use a brush to create some fun, fancy um, additions to your letters. Um, this is a lovely little H here some ascenders and descenders, and some hackles on the side. So the height of your letters is determined by the width of your brush. Um, and you can find recommended nib widths for the styles of writing online. The Roman capitals are typically four brush widths high, so I'm making a key to the left here before I begin. Roman capitals are one of the most difficult hand to render with a brush because they were designed to be carved into stone with a chisel, which means that with a brush, you have to be constantly turning your brush to accommodate for the way those letters are created. Uncio letters uh, used by the Celtic scripts are also about four brush widths high. This style was developed around the second century AD and it was favored by scribes for at least 500 years because of its ease and quickness. Um, like the Roman capitals, it's a majuscule alphabet, 
it doesn't have a, a minuscule but unlike the Roman capitals the pen is all at the same angle throughout the letter um, so it's much faster to write this is the um, hand that was used for preserving and illuminating a lot of Christian scriptures Next I'll show you the foundational hand, which was developed by Edward Johnston. Uh, he was an English calligrapher who is credited with starting the modern calligraphy revival in the early 20th century. He helped forge the interdependence of typography and calligraphy. His letters um, could easily be translated into type for printing presses. In the practice of formal handwriting, uh, through his research in medieval and Renaissance manuscripts, uh, Johnston saw the artist as a craftsman, a philosopher, and a scientist. Um, and his hand is one of my favorites to write with because it's well balanced and smooth and quick. Lastly, I want to show you the Textura Quadrata hand. This is also called Gothic Book Hand or Black Letter. It's the most enduring book hand in the Middle Ages, and it was used throughout the 12th to 16th centuries by scribes working on Christian texts, fine books, and scientific manuscripts. You can see in the example here how the letters look almost like a woven cloth with a beautiful texture. So as I said, I've been making these small sketches as a journaling practice this spring. I came across this verse in James chapter 4 a couple of weeks ago and I just love it. It says, wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded, grieve, mourn, and wail, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. So I love it because A, who doesn't wash their hands 10,000 times a day right now, and B, the rest of the verse deals with humility, which is in very short supply these days. It's pretty typical that during times of crises, um, when anxiety and tensions are high, um, people become defensive and offensive with their actions and their words, um, which makes humility difficult. So for this project, I'm playing around with a modified version of square Roman capitals. Um, you can see how I have to adjust and turn my um, brush every time I want to accommodate a different move of um, thickness for my letters. I'll speed through this so you can just see how the letters are created. S's are always the most difficult letter it seems to create, um, especially so with a brush that's trying to do the work of a chisel. Uh, with harder instruments, you can tip them up on the corners more easily and get those nice finishing touches on the S's. So the end of the verse is in uncial let lettering. And I love this promise because God promises that if we would just humble ourselves before him, he will lift us up. So I hope that's encouraging to you as it is to me that we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be righteous. We just have to be willing to come before God and wash our hands and say, yes, Lord, please lift me up. This last font I want to show you is called Baino, and it was created by Swiss graphic designer Fabian Korn. He created the font during a trip to Nice, Italy, where he was inspired by the diversity of cultures and the mixture of classical and modern architecture and cityscapes there. It's kind of a futuristic font, but it actually reminds me a lot of this Etruscan Phoenician engraving from about 1500 BC that I pictured here. Uh, my family and I have been watching all the Marvel movies while under lockdown, so I looked to Wakanda for inspiration for this last project that deals with current racial and ethnic tensions. The creative team of Black Panther 
chose this font to depict the title and credits for the film um, and for the English writing in Wakanda. It's a sans serif script, uh, which means it doesn't have um, additions at the tops or the bottoms of the letters. And um, it's very simple in its design, but it's also difficult to recreate with a brush because it's the same thickness throughout the letter, it's monoline, and it requires returning the brush again to accommodate for that. I'm also shrinking the size of some of these letters, um, which is an old scribe trick you'll see in ancient manuscripts that I love for fitting in all your letters. So the history of fonts matters. Um, many of the styles I know well were created by imperialist powers. And while fonts aren't inherently or necessarily political, I kind of wanted to find a font with a different story as I was working on signs for a peaceful march in solidarity with Black Lives Matter last weekend. So I created these. Um, portraits are not my strength, but it was a good and necessary act of grieving to really spend a couple of days staring at the portraits of Ahmad Arbery and George Floyd to wonder at their beauty and consider the lives that they led and to worry about those who might come after them in the continuing wake of prejudice and racism. I wanted to wrap up by showing you a few other examples of paintings I've done with a flat brush. The first is in Textura Quadrata, the second is in Anzio, and the last one is in Foundational Hand. So I hope you play around with some flat brushes or flat tools this summer and work with scriptures that you love. Try to sketch those out. Uh, remember, repetition is key, and I hope you have fun. Thanks.